Hello and welcome! In this video I'm going to be talking about cornering speed and basically this video is going to tie in two of my most recent videos, uh, one on aerodynamic drag and the other on downforce. So if you haven't yet watched those you would probably want to check out those before watching this one. So I'm going to be talking about cornering speed, maximum cornering speed, um, and how tires and downforce uh, affect uh, the cornering speed of a car. So basically what you've got going on is you've got a point uh, of which your car is going around a circle and it can go around this circle at a certain speed depending on uh, multiple variables. Now one of my uh, most common uh, equations that I reference is the friction force equation which tells us that the friction force of the tires on the ground of this vehicle are equal to the coefficient of friction of the tires uh, multiplied by the uh, normal force on the vehicle. Now the other thing we know is if you have a, an object and it's rotating about a point, um, then it's going to have an inward acceleration. Now we know force is equal to mass times acceleration. Uh, we know what the mass of the vehicle is. Um, and acceleration, this is going to be centripetal acceleration. So an acceleration that prevents this uh, car here from sliding outward. So there's going to be a centripetal force keeping it always accelerating inward. Um, and the equation for centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. If you want to know uh, where the equation for v squared over r comes from, uh, you can just quickly Google search uh, derivation of centripetal acceleration and it'll pop up. Um, our third step, set these two equal to each other um, because these are basically two ways of representing the same thing. So, uh, mu times n is equal to m times v squared over r. R here is the uh, radius of this turn. So, what we've got going on, uh, mu n, we can uh, multiply that r over here and divide by the m, so you've got mu n r over m equals v squared. Now we can kind of rearrange this a little bit, take the square root of this, um, and I've substituted in for n. n is equal to the car weight uh, plus downforce. Um, if you've watched my video on downforce, I've kind of gone into a little bit greater detail, uh, but basically normal force is the force that the ground is pushing up on the car. So that's equal to the vertical force pushing down on the car. That's going to be equivalent to the weight of the car uh, plus the amount of downforce that you have. Or if you have lift, it would reduce it. So uh, once we've rearranged this, we can say the maximum velocity for which this car can go around the corner uh, is going to be the square root of the coefficient of friction multiplied the weight plus the downforce uh, times the radius of the turn divided by the mass of the vehicle. So, this is how we find out our maximum vehicle speed. So let's just kind of do an example. Now, we've got a 1,000 kilogram car here, um, and it, we're going to say that its maximum downforce that it can produce is 1,000 newtons. That's about 225 pounds uh, for those who prefer that unit system. Um, so this is going to be going around a 100 meter turn, uh, about 330 feet, um, and then so the 1,000 kilogram car, that's about 2,200 pounds. So, first, let's see how fast this car can go around the corner at uh, 100 meters with coefficient of friction of 1 and no downforce. So we're going to plug in our variables. We're going to have V equals the square root of 1 plus 1,000 kilograms is the weight. We've got to multiply that by, or 1,000 kilograms is the mass, rather. We need to multiply that by 9.81 uh, meters per second squared. That's uh, gravity. And that will give us its weight, the force of the weight. Um, and plus, we're going to add in the downforce. In this case, we're not going to add any downforce. We've got 100 meters uh, for the radius and 1,000 kilograms for the mass. So we multiply that out. It gives you 31.32 meters per second. That's about 112 kilometers an hour or about 70 miles per hour. So that's the maximum speed that this vehicle could go around a corner uh, with these tires, which are pretty good tires if they've got a coefficient of friction of about 1. Um, going around this corner, it could go at 70 miles per hour uh, around this corner. Now, let's add in some downforce. So we're going to say it's at the maximum downforce that it can achieve, and that's at 225, uh, 225 pounds or 1,000 newtons, and that's at some certain speed. Um, so at that speed, we're going we're gonna to put in, plug in all of our variables, and we're going to see, well, what speed uh, exactly could this go if it was producing 1,000 uh, newtons of downforce? So we plug it all in, it gives us 32.88 meters per second, or about 6 kilometers an hour faster, or about 3.6 miles per hour faster uh, than if we didn't have any downforce at all. So you can see how it actually uh, improves the speed for which a car can go around a corner 
uh, a good amount depending on the downforce. Um, if you increase that downforce even more, then of course it even gets higher. So let's take one more example, um, and let's say we have some crappy tires on there. Uh, they've only got a coefficient of friction with ground of 0.8. So we're, we're going to eliminate the downforce. We're not going to say we have any downforce. Um, we're just going to be comparing back to this 70 mile per hour scenario. So all we're doing is we're changing this one right here to a 0.8. And in doing so, uh, it reduces the maximum speed that we can go around this corner to 28 meters per second, or about 100 kilometers an hour, or 63, 62 miles per hour. So, uh, you know, pretty significant based on your tire selection. So if you have really bad tires or really good tires, I mean, look at that. That's, you know, seven to eight miles per hour faster you can go around the corner just by changing your tires. If it was that simple, you know, that could be a serious uh, modification to your car if you're using it for, for a track or something like that. Um, now let's talk about uh, just some poor weather conditions. So we're going to go with packed snow and we're just going to go with an estimate of uh, the coefficient of friction between the tire and the packed snow of being 0.3. Now is that realistic? Uh, it's probably somewhere in the range. It could be a, a little bit lower, you know, maybe 0.15 or something like that. But anyways, we're just going to say it's around 0.3. Uh, we're going to have no downforce. So we're going to go around the same corner, same car, same tires. Only thing that's changing is we're no longer on asphalt, we are on snow. So this number here is going to change from a 1 to our estimated 0.3. So with these estimations and these assumptions, this car can go around that corner at only 17 meters per second, or about 62 kilometers per hour, or 38 miles per hour. So I mean, look at that. I mean, that's 30, 32 miles per hour slower just because we're on snow rather than asphalt. And yes, that makes perfect sense. Uh, it's just kind of, to see the math behind it is a little eye-opening and you realize, you know, why exactly that's the case. So uh, I hope you've learned from something from this. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.